Good morning, and welcome to the Tuesday Talk. I've been inspired by my recent trip to Italy uh, about what we're going to talk about today, and that's going to be nasal reconstruction. As you can see in this picture, this is referred to as a tagliacozzi flap, obviously a very Italian name, and it was a uh, method to reconstruct the nose that's been written about it in antiquity. So, okay, when it comes to nasal reconstruction, we have to first determine what structures are missing: skin underlying support such as the bone and cartilage or internal lining what we call the mucosa is one two or all three of those areas mean missing and that determines what type of reconstruction we do now this is obviously a very complicated subject and um, i think the first thing we're talking about is what causes nasal defects okay the probably the most common cause certainly here in in savannah is going to be skin cancer reconstruction that's treatment for skin cancers and then trauma it could be blunt trauma, such as a motor vehicle accident, ATV accidents. It could be penetrating type trauma, attempted suicides we sometimes will see. And I would say less commonly um, uh, complications following rhinoplasty. If too much of the septum has been removed, then the nose can collapse. Okay. We have to evaluate what's missing. If it's skin only, then it determines where is the skin and how much skin is missing. A little bit of skin towards the top of the nose. As you can see, you can pinch the skin. You can probably sew that back together towards the tip of the nose or the ala, that skin you cannot pinch. So then we'll have to borrow skin from another part of the body. And that may mean doing a bilobe flap, which we're gonna take advantage of this loose skin and bring some of that down, or a skin graft. Um, if it requires support, we t commonly take cartilage from inside the ear, it's called the conchal bowl, sometimes from the septum of the nose. And if it's a large nasal reconstruction, somebody's missing the majority of the nose, we might even have to take a little bit of bone from the head or rib from uh, cartilage from a rib. Okay. And then lastly, we found that nasal lining is important because you can do this beautiful reconstruction and if you don't line the inside, that part of the scar is going to contract and as it con contract, it's going to change the shape of your reconstruction. All right. This is obviously a very complicated subject and um, it's very difficult to talk about it in depth. And obviously, if this is something that uh, is an issue for you, or your family members, you really need to have an in-person consultation because you have to determine, number one, what structure is missing, number two, the overall medical condition of the patient, and how much surgery are they willing or able to undergo because a full-scale nasal reconstruction, which requires a large amount of skin, um, supporting structure and lining, will oftentimes need a uh, paramedian forehead flap, which is taking skin from the forehead, turning that over, leaving it attached to the blood vessels, which are here by the eyebrow, and leave them attached for two or three weeks. After that period of time, blood vessels start to grow in, and then that blood uh, supply can be divided because now it's got blood supply from the surrounding skin. And again, uh, this is an infinitely complicated uh, subject. So thank you.